Uh, this is Bilal Randri, and I'm at the Al Jazeera Forum with Daniel Levy. Uh, he's a director at the New America Foundation and also one of the founders of J Street. Uh, Daniel, uh, nice to have you at the at the forum. Uh, the, the, there's been lots of discussion at the forum about what's happening in the Middle East, uh, the revolutions, which, as we learned, many are still in process. How do you see any of this affecting the Palestine-Israel uh, issue? I think, as you say, Bilal, there have been several things going on at this forum. One of the things that's perhaps been most striking is a generational shift. And I think one of the things that people in the corridors certainly have been talking about is does this come to Palestine as well? Are we going to see the kind of civil protest, youth driven, freedom driven movement coming to what would be an obvious place for it to come to, right? Yeah. Um, there are questions there. Would the first target be their own leaderships or would it as would more obviously seem to be the case, be the occupation, be the bigger question of Palestinian freedom. So I think that's been a question that people have been asking here. I think the other thing, especially for someone who would have come here from Washington DC, like myself, that has been interesting is, in Washington, quite often the storyline around this revolutionary period in the Arab world has been hey, one of the amazing things is this isn't about America and it isn't about Israel. And Some people have been saying that as a way of, of conferring support. But is it? Well, what we're hearing... The other thing, by the way, you're hearing in Washington is uh, it proves that no one cares about the Palestinians. And I think what you're seeing here is from those who've been involved in this and those who are thinking to the future is first of all, for all the spontaneity, there's also serious strategy involved. Yeah. And one of the first things is, of course, people have to make sure that the gains of these democratic revolutionary movements are secured, and that actually these freedoms and new ways of relating to governance and citizenship are entrenched. But the other thing that's very clear from here is... Palestinian issue will be front and centre. It's not going to necessarily be the first thing that people want to change in policy, but the old regime system, which has essentially supported the status quo. And and okay, to interrupt you there. Anymore. And and so, uh, for example, in Egypt, the old regime uh, was I, w I wouldn't say close to Israel, but they had a, a certain understanding. And I'm sure there's concerns within Israel at the moment uh, th that perhaps things uh, are on shaky ground going forward. Um, how serious are they taking, uh, uh, well, from, from whatever you know, from your knowledge of the region, uh, how serious is Israel taking the change in Egypt specifically, uh, or how seriously do you think they should be taking what's happened? I think they're taking it quite seriously. I think they should definitely be taking it seriously. I'd say the Mubarak regime was very close to Israel. People have short memory span, but Israel's Prime Minister, Netanyahu, when he was desperately trying to say, hey, I've got friends in the region, I'm still trying to make peace, uh, the one place he could go was to run to Sharm el-Sheikh and have a little hug session with President Mubarak. This is, was just in January, just a couple of months ago. So I think on the Israeli side, the concern is less about the peace treaty unravelling. Right. It's more about a package of policies which the Mubarak regime supported and kept in place, which had no public legitimacy. Because those were policies like the closure on Gaza, like supporting a discredited and meaningless peace process those policies are very unlikely to continue. Okay. And I think Israel looks at that and they says, now some people would say, oh dear, we'd better change. And some people, in particular in government, are saying, we'd better dig in deeper and deeper. And, that's and on, on, on the other side, I mean, uh, from, from Washington side, um, there's been, at least at the forum, we've heard lots of criticism that uh, the US <laughs> was uh, too slow. Too, well, when they did react, they were too slow in their reaction. Uh, now with Libya also, perhaps to some extent. Uh, 
Um, what's the feel in, in Washington at the moment? Do, do they have a thumb on things or is just... Uh, you know, is there some a real plan in place to deal with what is clearly a shift in uh, the region, um, or will things just unravel uh, randomly? I think there are three things going on. First of all, it's healthy that this is not really about America. It's healthy that this is being driven here. America matters, but it's not the defining part of this. The defining part of this normally is what's going on on the ground. Number two, and it was said by people on the panel here, I don't think America has a grand strategy, a vision for dealing with this. Most of this has been ad hoc. Um, now, during the, the revolutionary successful moments that we've seen, it was relatively easy, even with former allies like Ben Ali and Mubarak, to understand that these guys were becoming history and you better get on board with the future. The, the situation now is much more challenging because we are kind of seeing a counter-revolutionary pushback moment in Libya, in Yemen, in Bahrain. Some of those are not only allies but places that matter to the Pentagon. Yeah. And this is going to be a big question now. How does America position itself in this counter-revolutionary moment when the option of waiting and saying, OK, we can get on the side of the winners is much less of an option. They've got to make much clearer choices. The third part of this is... If America doesn't get it right, there's going to be an increasing clash between old interests, if they can't redefine those interests, and pro professed American values. Right. So adapting to the fact that Islamists are going to be part of this democratic tapestry, deal with it, put aside your prejudices, adapting to the fact that you can't really be a friend of Arab freedom if you're an enemy of Palestinian freedom. Those kind of things America is going to have to adapt to quickly, one hopes. Well, let's hope they do it quickly. Just to tie back, I remember there was at least one comment in the, 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 the forum that said it's not a question of whether this would move to the Palestinians, but rather just of when. So let's see what happens over the next few months. I think, I'm sure we'll all be surprised, as, as we've been over the past few months. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks, uh, looking forward to speaking again.